Hey everyone, this is Ben Carmichael with New England on the Fly. Thanks for watching. We're here to do another gear review today. It's been a while since we've done one. Turns out it's hard to do them with an 18 month old running around the house. But uh, we're back and we're here today to talk about the Beulah G2 Platinum Spay. We're going to talk about the 13 foot 8 inch 8 9 weight. Uh, what makes this one so special? Well, it's a six piece. This is Beulah's travel spay rod. At 13.8, it's a good length, uh, but they decided to break it up into six pieces. I remember the first time that James and the uh, crew at Beulah showed me this rod, and I was really hesitant, to be honest. Uh, I tend to prefer rods with fewer ferrule connections as opposed to more. Travel rods have always been a little bit of a dicey gamble in my mind. Um, but I like and trust the guys at Beulah. I've always liked the rods, and so I decided to give it a try and wanted to share my thoughts with you today. Okay, so let's just start with some of the basics. What does the name mean, for instance? Beulah used to have the Platinum series. Now that's the Platinum G2 series. So G2 stands for graphene and graphite. And so they've combined graphite and graphene for, according to Beulah, what is faster hoop recovery and smoother energy transfer. Huh? Now, I was an English major, so I can't verify any of that. I'm just here to tell you that's what G2 stands for. Now, when we uh, look a little bit further down the rod here on the real seat, you'll see uh, AAA grade cork. Uh, that's pretty standard. It just means it's a really nice, smooth uh, cork handle. It does have some burl inlays. So you'll see some of these little uh, off-color, darker inlays. Um, I visually like the look of that. Some guys actually really prefer uh, just a straight-up cork handle. If you're going to use this rod a lot, and I mean really a lot, a lot, the cork and the burl will wear at different rates. Um, and so you'll start to feel some ridges and it won't be quite as smooth. Um, I am not going to use this rod that much. Um, and so it won't make a single difference to me over the lifetime of the rod. I do say the composite cork uh, as the fighting butt down here. That does make me feel better when I, you know, jam it in the rocks and the sand, uh, dunk it in the river as I use it as a wading staff, which I have done. Um, I feel better about having that composite down there, um, so that's good to me. Um, the real seat itself is uh, anodized aluminum covered in uh, plated nickel silver finish. It's got a real nice uh, shine to it. It's not uh, solid nickel silver, of course. Um, and what you have here is um, the wood for the real seat is a stabilized maple. So what does that mean? Wood, when it's exposed to different weather conditions, different humidity levels, um, is going to expand and contract or distort. So stabilizing wood is a process through pressurization. Uh, they actually remove all of the moisture from wood and then they inject a resin into it and that stabilizes it and prevents it from distorting under uh, different conditions of humidity and makes it stand up to everything a salmon trout or steelhead angler might throw at it, including snow like we have out the window here in New England today. Um, it results in a really nice looking real seat. It looks a little bit like a sort of cherry or mahogany. It's got a little bit of a red tint to it. Um, that's the stabilization process. It's not actually um, a cherry or anything like that. It is uh, a maple, but it looks really nice. Kudos to Beulah on that. The upgrade is from, if you remember the last generation, this was um, an aluminum real seat. This has made a real nice, I think, visual difference. Along the way, you see they've actually, all the way up the rod, they have titanium stripping guides uh, and snake guides for just a really high quality product for the price point of 750, uh, which is, in comparison to some other models, uh, very reasonably priced from uh, makers like Sage and Loop, which are pushing, what, 1250, 1300, which for a, uh, a spay rod, uh, graphite rod, I, it's just a lot of money in my opinion. Um, at that price point you could get uh, a used bamboo rod um, and I'm just not paying that much to be honest for, especially for a travel rod. Now I was trying to think about how to describe that to all of you and the best way that I can describe it is it's about 
five cans of beer long. Actually, pro tip, the uh, travel tube is a little bit wider aperture, and it is almost the exact diameter of uh, a can of beer. So you can put uh, four or five of those down in there, throw a little bit of ice, and the travel tube acts as a makeshift cooler. I've also done that. Now the six piece. There is a real advantage to that, of course. You can throw a 28 inch rod into a duffel bag, easily fits into some of the travel cases that say Fish Pond or others make. Um, there are some real advantages. As I said, I was hesitant. Um, I took it up salmon fishing with me up in Canada this summer, used it on a couple of different rivers, wind, rain, sunny conditions, all the above. Um, and I've really come to like it um, with just a few thoughts and caveats, and I just wanted to share three of those with you now. So, first of all, it's labeled as an 8-9 weight, but I would say after fishing it, it is a light 8-9 weight. So, just for, on a pure weight perspective, right, this weighs in at 7 ounces. If, again, you look at comparable length models from other manufacturers, you know, similar weights in terms of lines, uh, and then similar lengths, what you're looking at is about a full ounce heavier. So uh, instead of seven ounces, you're looking at uh, 7.9 ounces. So this makes it lighter for a rod in its category. Now, what that means is one, you know, the benefit is it's easier to travel with. Okay, we've established that shorter and lighter. What it does mean is that you really feel the rod load all the way into your bottom hand. That isn't for everyone, right? Um, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But um, what it meant for me was that I think this is closer to an 8 weight, maybe a 7 8, but I would say it's more of an 8 than it is a 9. That's n nothing wrong with that, just to clarify the 8 9 label. The other thing I would say is it makes me think a little bit about the context I'm going to fish the rod in. So where I go salmon fishing, there are, I have seen, fish over 40 pounds, um, and I have once seen and moved an Atlantic salmon over 50 pounds. Now if I'm fishing this rod in that context, I'm not going to feel quite as confident, if I'm honest. I have another Beulah rod that's more of a 9 weight would totally fish that rod with confidence. This is more of a, you know, 20 pound class, 10 to 20 to 30 pound class Atlantic salmon rod, I would say. Um, I haven't done, you know, uh, king fishing out west or something, or fish for kings. I'm probably not pulling this out if I'm doing that. Is it a good steelhead rod? Absolutely. Sea run browns? I think absolutely. Um, so just, I think, for this rod, you want to think about the context that you're fishing it in. Okay, second point, and this is Captain Obvious, right? It's a six piece. Now, what does that mean? When you have more feral connections, there's just more points of potential failure. So, whenever I go fishing with a spay rod, I always tape up the feral connections. Usually that's four points of contact, maybe it's three on the lowest end, but it's four points of contact. This is six. <clears throat> so. Just as an experiment, on the first day that I took it out, I didn't tape up any of the feral connections. I just, as you would, mashed a rod, the rod together. I didn't mash it together. I put the rod together um, and then went out fishing. Um, but I fit them together snugly, as I would fishing any graphite rod. At the end of the day, I came in and I took a look at the feral connections and they had indeed uh, moved considerably. Now, that's not unusual. I'm not saying that's anything specific to either the finish on this graphite rod or to Beulah's manufacturing process. It just means with a six-piece rod, you have to be particularly careful about taping up all of those connections and then checking them over the course of the trip. So, you know, it requires being a little bit more mindful, a little bit more careful with the gear that you're using. That's all. Just tape them up. Um, Taping them up, if you guys haven't done that, just a little sidebar here, um, really easy to do. This uh, blank, people often like to match the tape they're, they're using to the blank or to the material. Um, for a blank like this, I would say just use black electrical tape. That's I carry a roll of it in my bag at all times. 
Um, those who fish and tape up bamboo often like to use this tape that's brown and you splice together the ferrules and you tape them up. Uh, that would stand out on a rod like this. Or you can use uh, <clears throat> what a lot of people use out west and in Canada, it's just the clear tape that you use um, to tape on hockey equipment. Um, you buy rolls of that, um, like you know, Home Depot or Costco size, it'll last you a lifetime practically. So any of those will work. Just make sure you tape up the connections. The final thing I'll say, and this comes back to uh, what I mentioned under it being a lighter rod, is you really are going to feel the cast with this rod. Now, again, that's how I like to fish. It's the reason that I like Beulah rods to begin with. Um, I grew up fishing bamboo, and so I was really used to feeling rods flex in my hand. With a rod like this, you know, you can put a lighter uh, scandy line on it, and you could do some real light touch and go sort of casting with the tip. Um, or as I did, you know, I put a slightly heavier line on it, uh, and I really loaded this rod. Um, and for me, that was good. Um, I loved it. Um, I didn't have to look behind me and check my D-loops. Um, I also cast it overhand a couple times just to feel how the rod would feel, and it loaded fully down into my bottom hand. Some people don't like that. And, and this is just, you know, it's fishing. It's not, there's no right answer or wrong answer. It's all what you prefer, what you're more comfortable with what you enjoy. It's meant to be enjoyable, right? So some people prefer really high modulus, stiff graphite rods that do all the work for them. They don't really feel the line. Maybe they never have. Maybe they don't want to. They've got a stiff arm. I, I don't know. It's not my style. <clears throat> but if that's the case, I would say this is probably not a rod that you're going to be drawn to. Um, I would say this rod would help you cast better. You would learn to become a better caster, uh, but it might not be your style. Um, and that's just, again, there's no criticism either way there against Beulah or your casting style. Uh, just if you're gonna buy this rod and pick it up and use it, I wanna make sure that it fits your style. Um, there are some people out there, you know, who, um, I remember I was fishing with a tarpon guy in Florida once, and he picked up the graphite rod that I was tasting, casting um, it actually was a test rod, not a Beulah, another manufacturer, and he referred to it as a soulless whomping stick. <laughs> it was so stiff, it had no soul, no flex. Uh, that's not this rod. It's not Beulah rods. They have a little bit of soul. They've got a lot of flex. So, if that's your style, highly recommend it. So again, just to recap, Beulah Platinum G2 13.8 eight nine weight six piece rod i think it's more of an eight maybe a seven eight weight as we talked about it's on the lighter end it's full flex it's 28 inches long or five tall boys um, and it's just a really nicely made rod for 750 you are definitely getting your money's worth and more um, james and the whole beulah team they're best based on the west coast really nice guys stand behind their products um, I just can't recommend them highly enough. So, I was a skeptic at first. I've come to like this rod. I'm going to use it on medium to smaller rivers up in Canada uh, and do so with a great deal of enjoyment. Uh, yeah, and I will report back and share more here on YouTube. Make sure to click like and subscribe if you guys like this. Follow me on Instagram. We'll be sharing uh, stories and updates along the way. All right, guys. Have a great winter. We've got snow here coming down at the moment. It feels like a long way from salmon season, but hope some of you West Coast guys are getting out there, maybe Southern Hemisphere, you're getting out on the water, and you're having a great time. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Take care.